doesn't even make sense. But anyways, they had the shepherds in there. They had the wise men in there. Wise men were never at the manger. Get that in your head. They were never at the manger. I don't care how many Christmas plays you go to. There were no wise men at the manger. Didn't happen. If we have time this morning, we'll look at that out of the Bible. And then they had Santa Claus in the manger in my neighborhood right now. You can go drive over there. <laughs> And you've got your shepherds, you've got your wise men, you've got Santa Claus. All together in the manger, worshiping the Christ child. This is a beautiful thing. So, the early church, let's start there. One prolific writer in the early church was a fellow named Arrhenius, who was the bishop over all the churches of Asia Minor, and he was the bishop following John the Apostle and Polycarp, and then comes this Arrhenius. He was bishop of Asia from 170 to 180 AD, he took the time to write about all the church observances over the course of a year. Nowhere is Christmas mentioned or the observance of a day for the supposed birth of Jesus. You can check out <laughs> Iranius's writing in English at the Wheaton University website. You can go check it out for yourself. I did. He does not mention Christmas anywhere. Now, you're talking about 170 to 180 AD. This is the first 200 years of the church's existence. There is no mention of Christmas. There is no mention of the birth of Christ or observing it in the early church. It simply didn't happen. This is a later creation. Also, Tertullian, you've heard me speak of him before. Born somewhere around 150, 160 AD. Died somewhere between 220 and 240. No one's really sure. He also created a list of church observances. Never mentioned Christmas. So now we're well into the early 200s. Still no mention of Christmas or an observance of the birth of Jesus. But he openly condemned the practices of sun god worship that were beginning to be a part of the church. And what I'm going to show you this morning is that Christmas is a continuation of the same type of sun god worship that has overtaken Easter. The Ishtar feast, for heaven's sake, we even call it Ishtar when everybody runs out at sunrise to watch the rising of the sun. Do I have to spell that one out for you? Christmas is equally a pagan sun god time of worship. Augustine, you've heard the name Augustine. I talk a lot about Augustine here. Augustine of Hippo, North Africa. 354 to 430 AD, we're now working our way into the 400s AD, bitterly denounced the identification of Jesus with the sun god. It was Pope Leo I, often called Pope Leo the Great, because, you know, popes are humble. Um, <laughs> He openly denounced solar festivals when Christians would gather on the very steps of the Apostles' Basilica and they would turn to adore the rising sun. So in the three and four hundreds, you see the early inculcation of sun worship working its way into Christianity, but you have popes and you've got Augustine decrying these facts and trying to hold it back from working its way into Christianity. Now the Catholic Encyclopedia states that shortly after the Council of Nicaea, this is 325 A.D., a pope who was probably Pope Julius I in 349 AD for the first time assigned December 25th as the day for observing the birth of Jesus. Then in the 5th century AD, another pope made it a church law that all Christians would observe December 25th as Christmas forever. Now, why December 25th? Why is it that December 25th of all days was chosen as the day that we would observe the birth of Christ? The date of December 25th was chosen over 300 years after the death of Jesus. Now, that's a very important thing to remember, that after Jesus died for the first 300 years of Christendom on planet Earth, no one ever stopped on December 25th to think about the birth of Jesus. It didn't exist. The World Book Encyclopedia, again, these are things you can look up yourself, easy sources, admits the World Book Encyclopedia, quote, the exact date of Christ's birth is not known, the early Christians did not celebrate his birth because they considered the celebration of anyone's birth to be a pagan custom. The first mention of the observance of Christ's birthday appears in A.D. 200. For many years, several dates were used. December 25th was first mentioned in perhaps 336. That's the World Book Encyclopedia under the article Christmas. These things are not hard to find out. When the Catholic Mass was first said at midnight on December 24th, around the year 394 A.D., it was for the first time called the Mass of Christ or the Christ Mass. The apostate religious machine of the day 
changed it from Baal's birthday to the birthday of Jesus. The pagans loved it. It became the biggest day of the year for the Roman Catholic institution. In fact, Cardinal Newman, this is recent, who lived from 1801 to 1890, often called the father of the Second Vatican Council, wrote in his book, The Development of Christian Doctrine, quote, we are told by Eusebius that Constantine, in order to recommend the new religion of Christianity to the heathen, transferred into it the outward ornaments to which they had been accustomed on their own. The use of temples and these dedicated to particular saints and ornamented on occasions with branches of trees, incense, lamps and candles, votive offerings on recovery from illness, holy water, asylums, holy days and seasons, use of calendars, processions, blessings on the field, sacerdotal vestments, the tonsure or the shaving of your head, the ring in marriage, turning to the east, images at a later date, perhaps the ecclesiastical chant, all of these are of pagan origin and they were sanctified by their adoption into the church. Now what Cardinal Newman is claiming is that yes, all these things are absolutely pagan, but that because the church eventually adopted them, the Roman Catholic Church adopted them, that they were sanctified by the use of the church. He's wrong. They are still pagan in their origin, and they are still worshiping pagan gods. The fact that the Catholic Church adopted them means nothing. Now, he's right. Constantine, in the early 300s, was a Roman emperor who had a problem on his hands, which is that for the first 300 years of Christianity, there had been a great deal of persecution against the Christian populace. He also had a large Jewish populace to deal with, and then he had this large pagan culture that was celebrating all these mystery religions handed down to them from Babylon. So he had a conflict in publicly allowing each of these different groups to celebrate their particular holidays and holy days and to worship. Oftentimes they wanted to use the same places to worship, the same temples, the same meeting places. Well, Constantine claimed to have seen the cross of Christ during a battle, and he was told that as long as he saw, or as long as he fought under the image of the cross, that he would prevail. However, in Constantine's life, he continued to build temples to foreign gods as well as to Christ. So he never really fully embraced Christianity. Nevertheless, he Christianized Rome and made it the official state religion of Rome. The problem was he had all these pagans who really liked their traditions, and he imposed Christianity on them. So what do you do? When you let them continue doing everything they're already doing, you just call them Christians. You just let them go ahead and celebrate all their pagan feasts. You just make them Christian feasts. All these different pagan feasts were brought into the Christian church and stamped onto Christianity. Every year at the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year, they would celebrate the rebirth of the sun god, Tammuz. The shortest day on that night, they would throw a log called the Yule log. Yule means sun. They would throw a Yule log onto the fire. And their belief was from the ashes of the Yule log, the next day, a fir tree would spring to life. And that fir tree was a symbol of Tammuz, the rebirth of the sun god. This goes way, way historically before Christianity. The idea of throwing a yule log on the fire, and the next morning there's a fir tree decked out in gold and silver with gifts under it, all predates Christianity by a long shot. This is all straight from Babylon. And so what does Constantine do? He says, well, this is all Christian now. Instead of celebrating the birth of the sun, S-U-N, we'll just make it the birth of the sun, S-O-N. And there you go, you've got your Christ mass. And that's what we still celebrate every December 25th. And the Christian church has embraced it. E.G. White writes in his book, The Great Controversy, the pagan god Tammuz was born on December 25th. Quote, born on December 25th, he represented the rebirth of the sun. As the pagan god child, he was called Baal Berith, who was the lord of the fir tree. You see now why I have trouble bringing a Christmas tree into my house? He was called the Lord of the fir tree. The word Yule is a Babylonian word for infant. And December 25th was called by the pagan Anglo-Saxons Yule Day. Which is why you can...